So this case you guys have not seen since the virtual slide for this one was uh, messed up. But I'm going to give you a look here. This is one that I have from my teaching files. Well, tell me from this power, I know it's scarier when you haven't previewed it, but tell me what, what uh, possible things would you uh, think of here? Oh, there's a bit of dust. It's okay to be wrong. Don't worry. No you one dies if you're wrong here. Like AK versus Bowens. Yeah, good. Right. It's an epidermal cystic end and it's got some jumbled, disorganized look and some increased keratin on top. So um, as we go closer, and this is actually like one of the most, I mean, this is something I see regularly, but it's such a perfect example. Look at that. This is, is Bowen's disease, right? Uh, car, uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ. And um, this is a perfect example of kind of the the pagetoid form, or I suppose you could also say that it's kind of got a clonal effect, right? From low power, I would also really think of a clonal seborrheic keratosis in my differential because those can be kind of uh, thin acanthotic lesions that are thin and broad sometimes, and they can have these round nodules of uniform keratinocytes. But as we go closer here, these are like gray cytoplasm and it, in fact quite vacuolated, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and more atypical. And if you go hunting around, you'll find more atypia, mitotic activity. Sometimes if I struggle with these, I mean, this one's not a struggle, but if I have cases where, where I struggle between, say, clonal SEB and squamous situ slash Bowen's disease, sometimes doing like a key 67 or MIB-1 and P53 can be helpful. It'll show a lot of expression way up. Although I, I don't do that very often. It's just occasionally I've had times where there's like large you know, like a large pigmented patch on the face and I'm between, is this just a big, huge seb or a squam in situ? That's going to actually significantly change management, right? So in those cases, sometimes I've done that. Now, what do we do with all these vacuoles? Look, these are clear vacuoles indenting and scalloping the nucleus. I've taught you guys before, I think, that when you see clear vacuoles that push into the nucleus, that means they're lipid vacuoles. Well, a malignant a carcinoma with lipid vacuoles we always teach is sebaceous carcinoma. So should I call this sebaceous carcinoma in situ? Well, those things have been published in the literature before, but I, I see this like um, multiple times per week, probably, uh, focal vacuole and sometimes extensive vacuoles in squam in situ. So it's hard for me to believe that these are all just happen to be incidental sebaceous carcinoma in situ. And clearly they, at least from I've not gotten follow-up saying, oh, wow, these behaved super aggressively. So whatever this phenomenon is, it doesn't seem to make a difference for the patient as far as patient care goes, from my experience. And um, uh, my colleague, Dr. Junkins Hopkins, is, is particularly interested in the Bowens form of squamous situ. And Bowens is, I usually just call all these squamous cell carcinoma in situ, but Bowens I think is kind of used for the ones, the squamous situs that have like the full thickness, significant atypia, or this kind of clonal look. Um, and in any case, um, she has, has uh, mentioned, I think they presented at the American Society of Dermpath last year with uh, uh, Victoria Kozlowskaya from um, uh, UPMC, that you can have a variety of adnexal differentiation in Bowen's disease, sometimes sweat duct formation, sometimes vacuolation like this that may be sebaceous or something. So it seems that um, the Bowen's form of squame in situ, which occasionally also can invade, can, can kind of mimic or have overlap with adnexal carcinoma. All right, the other thing I'm going to point out is this is like, the, honestly, probably the best example I would say that I have of eyeliner sign, right? When squamous cell carcinoma in situ spreads out beyond where it started, it tends to fill up, trickle, and have pagetoid cells in the epidermis and eventually fill up the epidermis, but it seems to spare the basal layer. Now, I, the way I think of it is where it starts, it kind of fills the entire epidermis, even the basal layer. But as it spreads out laterally, it fills up the epidermis but leaves that basal layer intact. And that's what you see there is this like layer of basically normal keratinocytes, sometimes with pigment like here underneath the base and the carcinoma filling the epidermis up above it. So that is a pretty useful sign for squamous cell carcinoma in situ. You can see a little bit of eyeliner sign, although it tends to be thinner and more compressed in Paget's disease. And um, you do not usually see it in melanoma in situ. So that's kind of the trick there. So this is kind of an example of the clonal or pagetoid uh, form of Bowen's 
type uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Oh, these are also, I believe, uh, diffusely P16 positive, I learned from a colleague on Twitter, although I've never um, done that, actually. Um, so anyway, that's a kind of an interesting finding. Look at that. That's unbelievable. Dr. Wow. Gardner? Yes, ma'am. Can you ma throw hydroacanthoma simplex into the differential from low power view? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, hydroacanthoma simplex, which is kind of like intraepidermal poroma like it's basically that that uniform monotonous cells just filling up the epidermis and not sending those fingers down into the dermis and we'll see an example of one of those not quite like this but yeah absolutely hydroacanthoma simplex could go in the differential so the real the real thing here is deciding if this is malignant or not and to me to, based on the mitotic activity and the degree of atypia and just kind of the overall pattern i think this looks malignant and here's like, you know, there's a couple of mitoses there. Sometimes having lots of mites or high level mitoses can be helpful. But um, there's another one right there. But uh, yeah, hydrocanthoma simplex could certainly be in the differential here. Good, good point. All right. So squamous cell carcinoma in situ. 